Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to wisely spend all that hard earned money of yours. So this is the second video in the series that we've started on how to learn to build a gaming PC. So if you haven't seen the first one, the link to that will be in the description and in the i button. So initially for this video, what I had in mind is that I wanted to give you like a percentage allocation, like spend so much money on a processor, so much on a graphic card, so much on a hard drive. That would just be like a very simple thing, but it's, it's not really that simple. You know, you cannot just allocate a certain percentage to something, although that would be amazing. So what I decided to do instead was to give you a few tips that you could use when selecting the parts for yourself. So the first one is that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a gaming PC. I mean, some people think that you absolutely need to have a Core i7, which we'll get to after this, and that you need to have a GTX 1080 only to get gaming performance. You can check out the PC build videos that I've done. They range as low as 20,000 as well, and you can still play almost all the games out in the market. Now, obviously you won't be able to run all of them at ultra at 4K, but you know what? Being able to play those games itself is a pretty big thing. Doesn't matter what resolution it's at, what setting it's at. As long as you have playable FPS, I think you'll be pretty happy anyways. So here's my second tip for you. So like I was saying with the i7, don't spend more money on your processor than your graphic card. I don't know why, but I've seen so many people talking about this, even in my comment section, saying that you need an absolutely good processor. That is just not true. Frankly, your graphic card is the one who's handling most of the gaming performance. So that is where you should be spending the major bulk of your money. Obviously, the processor has a part to play. It's not like it's like not at all important. But don't value your processor so much that you undervalue your graphic card only to realize later that if you'd spend well, you'd actually have a better gaming PC. The third tip on our list is to invest in a good power supply. Now, I have been saying this time and again. The power supply is the heart of the build. It powers your whole PC. So if you happen to lose that, if it happens to give up, not only would you lose your power supply, but it would end up damaging all the other parts in your PC as well. And that is not something you definitely want. Like it could happen that you go onto Outer Vision, put in all the parts you're using, and it says the recommended wattage is 350 watts. So you see this some cheap power supply for 450 watts, and you're like, oh, this should work. But it really doesn't. You end up with sad connectors and a bad power supply that is not actually enough to juice your system. And what happens is you just, it, it's a complete loss. I mean, for instance, check out this one from Foxin. Like, what is Foxin? It could be a good brand, but Foxin? What does the Fox say? It says, don't get this power supply. It says, invest in a good one because that is where you should spend your money. <laughs> All right, so jokes apart, let's come to our tip number four. So now again, just like I talked about the graphic card and the processor, don't take from the budget that you have spared for your graphic card and invest in a processor. In the same way, the tip number four is that first spend on the initials and then think about the additionals. So what do I mean by that? For example, you just like brought a cheap processor and then bought a really expensive aftermarket cooler. But then afterwards, when you have saved up, it's not like you can expand your processor by adding a little extra power to it. That's just not how it works. Instead, get a good processor now, deal with the company heatsink for as long as it works. And when you have enough money, invest in an aftermarket cooler. So this is just a small example of how people get carried away into so much of the additionals that they actually forget that the bare bones of the PC are actually the main components. And my fifth and last tip to you is that don't waste your money on a pre-built PC. Now I know that building a PC does seem a little intimidating. You feel like you'll screw up, something is going to go wrong. And so you find that, you know, there's this pre-built PC that I could just buy and it'll be a really cheap option. But think about it. The price that you'd pay for a pre-built PC, you could build a much better PC in that same amount. And there are some great tutorials out there on YouTube on how to build a PC. I plan to do one myself really soon. So if you want to watch that, don't forget to subscribe. So what happens with pre-built PCs is obviously somebody's building it. So there's going to be a margin of profit that they're going to charge for themselves. And that is just extra money that you're paying for something that you could have done much better by yourself. Also a trend that I've seen with these PC builds is that they only reveal stuff like their RAM, their graphics and their processor. Most of the times they use older generation processors, they use an older generation of RAM and they don't tell you what power supply they're using. They generally get like cases with power supplies built in or like a cheap power supply. So that's where they try to save money and make more profit. But in the long run, that is a loss for you. 
All right, so those were my five tips for you. Do you feel like I missed out something? Do you feel that there's something you can add that I don't know? Then let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit that like button. Share with your friends who you think will also enjoy this and also definitely do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.